good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Once again. Yes, greetings from the Gethsemane Baptist Church where the Honorable Dr. Dwight read it and the Lady Greer read it is my first lady. I just thank God for them. I thank God for them, our awesome pastor and first lady. There's one thing about my pastor. He always say, when you get a chance to preach, preach. And that's what I want to do tonight. I just thank God and praise God. I thank God for each and every one of you that are here. I thank God for you, you, and you once again at the Grace Faith Fellowship. Thank you for the pastor, Julius Smith, for allowing me to stand behind this sacred desk. Let us just look to the Lord. Our Father and our God, Lord, I just want to thank you once again, God. Thank you, God, for this day that you have made, God. Father God, as I come now, it's now time for teaching and preaching, Lord God. But Lord God, I acknowledge that I cannot do anything until the preacher and the teacher come, Lord. So Father God, I pray now that you anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, making teaching and preaching easy, Lord that someone would be edified, that you will be glorified in it all, Lord God, that it will make a word, a word that come forth, that make us a people for the better. Lord, I ask this in all other blessings, in Jesus Christ's name, I do pray. And let the blessed people of God already say amen. 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 There is a word. And I'm going to go a little different this time. I know we are always start out preaching here when I get the opportunity. But I'm going to do a little different tonight. But our teaching will be coming out of Philippians chapter 2, and I will be lifting up verses 1 through 5 there. Are you with me? Amen. And it's recorded there. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any bows and mercies, fulfill you my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through vainglory, but of lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I just want to present a topic tonight for this text, the joy of loving others. The joy of loving others. When you love others, you can have joy. We all have found ourselves in a difficult situation to love others. But the believer in Christ Jesus can find joy in loving others, even when they have been hurt or offended by others. If the believer have that agape love, I mean that agape love, that agape love, which is God's love, and it's not that brotherly love or that love between a husband or, or a wife, but it is the most self-sacrificing love that God has for his own children. Sacrificing love was the type of love displayed by Jesus Christ. And the word joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit, and I know that a lot of us, we know that. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit of God. And the fruit of joy can help the believer in Christ Jesus have the joy of loving others. And so here in our text today, let us just see what Paul would have revealed through the scriptures that was read in your hearing here. First of all, tonight, I just want to present how to get the joy of loving others. 
how to get the joy of loving others. The love of Christ, which I have stated, is agape love, right? And so the love, and so that is love, and it's, it's selfish, and it is a sacrificial love. Other words, this is a trait of love that is in Christ. Agape love is the love of the mind, of the reason, and of the will. It is the love that goes so much farther. It goes so far that it, it, it loves a person even if the individual does not deserve to be loved that actually loves the person who is unworthy of being loved. And that's how the agape love is. You see, the agape love is the love of Christ, the love which he showed when he gave and sacrificed himself for us. You know, even though we did not deserve it, we were unworthy of such love, yet Christ loved us despite of it all in spite of it all. You see, it is the love of Christ that stirs the believer to keep that unity. Anybody know that it is the love of Christ that, that, that will keep you to continue to have unity? You see, because this is the Lord's spirit of love. And so tonight, what I want to present, scriptures that will be used, to, that we can always be mindful of his love. And I know that we are all we're familiar with this particular scripture, which is in, in where it states that a new commandment, Jesus states, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And he, and he states there, he said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if ye love one another. And you can pin that from John 13, verses 34 through 35. And it was reading out of the King James Version. And then he also states in the word of God, it said, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And then it just goes on with scriptures that we can just, um, you know, go to in, in the word. And, and it's there is a word there in Romans 12 and 9. And it reads out of the new translation. It states, don't just pretend that you love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong, but hold tightly to what is good. So we don't have to love what is wrong. But what is good, we want to hold tight to it. That's what that word let us know here, there. And then it goes on, and when you look in that Romans 12 and 10 out of the New Living Translation, it said, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. And then we can go on and on and on. And that verse, Thessalonians 3 and 12, it says, and the Lord make you to increase and abort in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. And then when we look in that first Peter in the New Testament, first Peter chapter one, that verse 22, it states there and it said, now you can have sincere love for each other as brothers and sisters, because you were cleansed from your sins when you accepted the truth of the good news. So see to it that you really do love each other intensely with all your hearts. And that's what Second Peter, you know, I mean, First Peter chapter 1, verse 22, let us know there. So other words that will keep us stirred up and keep us in unity. These are words that we can just go to and help us even in, in, you know, in our weak times. Because sometimes we might not love others like we should. Amen? And so I want to present another something else here tonight. How to fulfill the joy of loving others. How do we do that? How do we Fulfill the joy of loving others. You see, the believer should have that joy in Christ first in order to recognize 
when the lack of unity is taking place. When we recognize, we can break on how to fulfill that joy. Paul here, he points, his point is, joy in Christ would be fulfilled by one thing, the unity in the Philippians church. So we as believers can be fulfilled only if unity exists between us. Anybody know that loving others and unity could come together? Yes, it do. It comes together. And that's why David, he will always say in that Psalms 133, in that verse 1, he will always say that, that, that scripture, he said, Behold, how good and pleasant it is when the brethren come together in unity. So, other words, what that let us know that we got to be like-minded, having that same love. Even us today, even us as the believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we got to be like-minded. We got to be having that same love. We have to be of one accord. We got to be of one mind. And we got to be in one mind in who? In Christ Jesus. Are y'all with me here today? And so as we go on here, these are scriptures of how to fulfill the joy of loving others. Amen? Y'all mighty quiet out there. So as we look here, we can go even further. Let's look at some scriptures, more scriptures tonight. How to fulfill the joy of loving others. When I looked at um, the New Testament reading of John chapter 15, verse 11, and it, and it stated out of that New Living Translation, and when I read it there, it said, I have told you this so that you may be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. So that's, that's a scripture right there that he let us know. How he can talk to us through his word that we may be filled with his joy. And then when we look at that verse, that, that chapter 16 of John 24, it reads there, and it states that out of that New Living Translation, it says, you haven't done this before. Ask, using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. So other words, well, who do we have to do? We have to ask. Ask him. Ask him. When we need, you know, when we need some joy, when we need that unspeakable joy. Amen? Are y'all with me here today? And so when I looked at that Romans 14 and 17, I said, Lord, God, you just got, you got bread everywhere. Bread, bread. You see, because you can't do nothing um, uh, with the, with, you can do something with this bread. You might can't do anything with other words, but with the word of God is something that you can be fed, you can be, and get and receive, that it will help us in our time of need. And so that Romans 14 and 17, it states, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on, that Ephesians 4 and 3. It said, Always keep yourself united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourself together with peace. So that right let us let us know we always have to keep ourselves united with the Holy Spirit. I know the Spirit of the Lord, you know, you know, in the Old Testament, it states that, that the Spirit of God do not scribe with man at all times. And so when he, He's not there to quicken us, His word is there to quicken us. Especially if we have, you know, ha have His Word in our hearts. Amen. You know, I heard the word in the opening of our um, service this evening, and it said, Let thy word be a lamp unto my feet and a light in the path I walk. So all we need to do is have that word, and it will light up some things in our situations, in our circumstances. All we got to do is, uh, is cut the light on. Amen? And so as we go on, I just want to pull out, you know, some scriptures or readings of things that will hinder us from loving others. Now, these, these are scriptures that will help us a lot of times 
when we are, that will hinder us from loving others. These are things that will, you know, will take place. Things that will hinder us from loving others. It's like, first of all, scrap will cause one from loving others. Yes, that scrap will cause that. You know, wasting energy, trying to get one's way about a situation. You said, that's one of the scriptures there. Scriptures that can, but, but scriptures that can help us in with this is like Philippians 2 and 3. It said, let nothing be done through scrap or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. A lot of times we have to esteem others better than ourselves. Because when we esteem others, you know, you might it might be a time that you can encourage somebody. Amen? You know, the scripture did say, look not every man on his own things, but on the things of others. And that, that this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So a lot of times we have to do that. We have to esteem others better than ourselves. Amen. And so when we look in that 2 Timothy 2 and 24, and it reads there and say, And the servant of the Lord must not scribe, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and patient. And then that brother James, he just come right in and, and you know he speaks. He said, But if ye have bitter envy and scrap in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. And then we can just go on and on. Go back to the Old Testament. And when you look at that Proverbs, Proverbs is a good um, a book that you can read, you know, to help you, you know, in life situations. Because when I went there and I looked there, it talks about in um, Proverbs 3 and 30. It says, Scribe not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. So if man have done you no harm, do not scribe with man without a cause. A lot of times, you know, you know, you, you, I know a lot of times, you know, someone might have looked at you a, a wrong way. Don't even know you. But it's, you know, but it's, that's called scribing with a man without a cause. You don't even know the individual, but you got something against the individual. I just use that for an example tonight. Amen? And so then we look at that Proverbs 20 and 3. It says, It is an honor for a man to cease from scrap, but every fool will be a meddling. And then that Proverbs 25 and 8, it says, Go not forth hastily to scribe, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor have put thee to shame. And then he goes on in that Proverbs 26 and 7, he says, He that patheth thou, and metal was scrap belong not to him. Other words, you do not belong to the, to the Lord. It's like one that take a dog by his ears. My God, my God. So another hindrance, as we have even read in our scriptures tonight, another hindrance is that vain glory. We know that vain glory, you know, other words, seeking attention for oneself. And so when you have that vain glory, that is empty glory. And that's why, you know, that's a good word in Galatians 5 and 6 when it say, it say, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen? But this is something that can help us on tonight. And I'm going to get ready to close and leave you alone. Things that will exalt us when loving others. Anybody know that there are things that will exalt us when we are loving others. And that is to have that humble spirit. When you have that humble spirit, humble, and that unselfish spirit, those are things that can help us when loving others. And how do we know this? How do we know this, teacher? We know this because of what the words say. Matthew 23 and 12 in that New Living Translation, it makes it so plain. It said, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled, 
and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And that's what the words say, amen? That is what, I, what the words speaks. So if the word said it, that's so, that's what the word will do. And a lot of times we got to rip that word. Sometimes we might not rip it the way we should, but we thank God when, we, when he brings those things back to our remembrance, we can rip that word of God. And so in closing tonight, as I get ready to close here, having the mind of Christ can give us the joy of loving others. When we have that mind of Christ, and he can give us that joy for loving others. Otherwise, we got to have that mindset of Christ. We got to have that mindset. Otherwise, we got to have the mindset, but not only have the mindset, we have to be in Christ. We have to be in Christ also. Because the verse say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we know that when we have this word and we apply it, not just being hearers of the word, but when we are doers of that word and apply it, what? We can have that joy. We can have that unspeakable joy. Why? Because we are in Christ and we have that mindset of Christ. So when we search the scriptures and see what the words say about loving others, there is power, power in loving others. Anybody know that there is power in loving others? You know, I, you know, I picked up this book um, uh, along, along the way, and it was by um, Gary um, Chapman, the author of the book. And the book, he stated in there, one of the things he stated, he said, the other side of love was the name of the book, the other side of love. And what he stated there, he said, when it comes to positive action, love is the greatest. Anybody know that love is the greatest? When we have that pop, um, you know, positive action, love is the greatest. Even in our circumstances, and in our situation. A lot of times we might not like, you know, the way things are going. In, you know, situations and circumstances about what? Love anyway. Love anyway because you what? Love conquers all. So other words, the scriptures indicate that if we choose to live a life of unconditional love for other people, God will do what? God will pour out his love into our hearts by his Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, he will. And you have you ever been in a situation like that? God had to pour his love out in you. And you, uh, you had to look around and say, when the word did that come from? That had to be the Lord working in me. Because I can remember when. But when God is working in you, and his love and his unspeakable joy, you can love others. Amen? Amen. Amen. So loving God is a lifestyle. And it is central in God's desire for us. So I'm going to leave this scripture. We have, you know, I stated it in the beginning of the, of the teaching, but I'm going to leave you with it once again. And it reads, it says, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another, Jesus said. This is what Jesus has said now. This is not what I have said. This is not what I have written down, but it's what I have written down, what was stated out of the word of God. Jesus said this. He said, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So love is to be the distinguishing mark for us as followers and believers of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when we want to continue with that joy, unspeakable joy, we got to hold on to the one that can give it to us. Amen? Amen. Because we just thank God for Jesus that he loved. He didn't love it when everybody talked about him and mistreated him. But what did he do? He loved anyway. He was on that cross. And what did he say? He said, Father, 
forgive them for, for, for they know not what they're doing. And see, a lot of times, they may not know what they're doing, but continue to love anyway, because Jesus, eventually, he will fix things. He will make things all right. Amen? Because that's just the kind of God that we serve. If anybody tonight just love who you can go to so you can get that joy, so you can continue to love, just keep on loving on Jesus. Because he's the one that make everything all right. It may be someone, if it's all right, Pastor Smith is opening up the doors of the church. It may be somebody here tonight that I just want to come forth and be a part of this ministry. And you've been hearing the word, you've been hearing the teaching of the word, sound word, base word, scripture word, words that you know come from the Lord. You might want to be a part of this, this edifice here tonight. Do we have one? May God bless you. At this time, I will turn it back over to Pastor Smith. Amen. So before we close on this evening, I ask that everyone, you know, take some time, some extra time this week to meditate in the Word. I know I, I, I know I need it, so I charge you to do the same. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Word that came forth, Lord. I ask that you minister to each and every hearer, that your precious Holy Spirit to minister to our hearts and allow us to see how much you love us, Lord. The love, the great love that we may understand and perceive the height, the length, the depth, and the breadth of your love, Lord. And that, that love that you have for us, that as we grow in our revelation of that, that we will be able to pour out, overflow love unto others, Lord, that we may walk in the joy of the Lord, that your joy may abound in each and every hearer tonight. May it be so. And every attack of the enemy, every strategy of the, of the enemy to every hearer, I rebuke in Jesus' name. I declare that you who have begun a good work, Lord, in those hearers, in those in this room, I believe you will complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. Your will be done, Lord as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done in each and every individual in the sound of my voice. May it be so, Lord, and we give you praise. But as we leave this praise, but never your presence, we give you the praise, the honor, and glory until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.